good into the early in the early game into crazy late game monsters i want to remember when bang was on skt and they were playing hyper carry lucian yeah but it was because lulu they had lucian. a lulu so now you've got lucian with a yumi that might do the exact same thing you turn lucian into a late game monster being able to dash around be so difficult to kill to lock down that i think that they're putting so much on tactical and treats here that they might just live up to the task because they definitely did so last split. So we have a Javan, but uh, I would like to draw your attention to the pike on your screen. It was already locked in before I had a chance to realize that phase two of Band has in fact begun. Uh, of note, there is a Leona already locked in, so the likelihood of that being pike support is very low. Yeah, but that could also be pike top, that could be pike mid, could which be can pike be very viable lane. as well. It could be pike anywhere, probably not in the jungle, but <laughs> pike is a sick target when you're dealing with champions like Yumi, that try to keep these champions alive. If you can just get them to half HP, Pike will finish her off and get Yumi eliminated. I'm pretty sure one auto from anyone, a small whisper, and then Pike and ult and Yumi will go down. She has no HP. Well, Nico and Vlad are gonna get banned by CLG Academy, Rek'Sai, and one more to come here for TSM. They are protecting their jungler here. So note that they ban top lane champions. So that tells me that's probably gonna be a Pike top lane because Vlad can obviously pull away from Pike, dodging out of the ultimate. And then Nico with the clone might be able to confuse you, might have a really strong laning face against Pike. So to me, this says this is Pike top lane, and we just showed it this very early on. We'll have to see. CLG Academy gonna show us a little bit more of this draw. Are they really picking? They're picking Swain. Wow, that is just weird. Okay. okay. So. What can we say? We need to we need <laughs> to see the full picture. Honestly, we gotta see what they did, and that's that's exactly what TSM exactly. is thinking, right? That's the whole point of these reps. You make the other team think, all right, I don't know what they're doing. We we gotta wait. So they have to now pick thinking, we don't know what CLG is doing. Let's make sure that our, at least our composition is cohesive. If you take away the Azir, you now have a ranged answer against Swain, which is pretty nice. You can obviously push him back, and if Leona engages on you, you use the Emperor's Divide to get everybody out of the way. So they're going with a bit of a safer champion, and the Kennen will obviously be the next safe answer. But in MSI, we saw Wonder lane Pike against Kennen, and he did just fine. Yeah, I mean, Kennen has been a band a lot in Phase 2 so far. Pretty popular champion for Brandini. But uh, lots of questions unanswered here in the CLG draft, and perhaps not answered as they look to lock in their last pick here. I'm, I'm assuming they need a jungle. Off. I think Lee would be really good here because you can kick Kennen out of the fight. That's always been my approach. If I'm against Kennen, I'll... Wow, okay, Pike jungle? What is happening today? No, it's Funnel. 
It's funnel. Oh. It's funnel mid with Corky. Who? Wait. Right? Well, I see a smite, and it's yeah, Tuesday. it's smite mid. It's it's some funnel. What are we? Well, we're breaking history here. I I don't know what they're planning. So I said that we had a lot of unanswered questions after the first four picks. Yeah. And I said that maybe we wouldn't have them answered after the last pick. It's but funnel. I was mostly no, voking. It, it has to be funnel. Yes, it's funnel. Okay. Corky funnel. Yeah. It's, it, so I was at a party where somebody was telling me about Corky funnel, and I disregarded him. I'm eating my own words now. Because he said it, it was it was with Braum, but I guess Leona is the solution. This is funnel mid. Leona and Corky. Corky just shoves up, and Leona stuns you. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Season 9. I like it. I like what's going on. And there's a five-man invade. Of course there is. CLG Academy going to move out onto Summoner's Rift. To, well, I guess we're getting sleepy because they spice things up here in game four crumbs. Yeah, you, you don't sleep on Academy. Absolutely not. I feel, you know what? Maybe the last TLA game, a little too disciplined for your liking. Maybe not enough action. Maybe it's been a long day getting through some games, but Tactical's going to have to be real careful. Sweeper comes out, Tactical gets away. Hope you didn't level anything, because you might need the E. As Tactical does get away to the safety of the shrubbery. Huh. So what? what's really interesting here is... How does Funnel work against Yumi? Because Yumi's not the champion that can just randomly roam on her own. She has to be attached to somebody pretty much at all times. So if she can't really leave her lane to help anybody else, she has to stay with someone, that might mean that Leona and Corky have more time to do whatever they want around the map. And look at that. They don't even know that this, this could be is. Treats has not checked. Will Spika use flag? Yes, he does. Good call. But again, Travan level one with just the flag. Not all that impressive. Red buff's gonna be the fight contested. They take the ward down as well. I think TSM have to leave. They might be trying to poke away. But look at what's going what on. What are you gonna Az do? Azir is pushing mid lane, so that's okay, what's okay. going on. Azir pushed mid so much that they forced Moon and Tuesday to get back in there. Try not to miss out much of that CS. Nice there from a Blaze Olive using that early pushing power, but Moon here gonna prep up the minions, gets one. Second one's gonna go over, and Tuesday shouldn't miss too much more. But if you haven't seen Funnel in a while, yes, the strategy is worse after the changes, but what you're trying to do is very much the same. So I'm gonna just say it flat out. I think Mordekaiser is a better funnel pick with Leona than Corky because you get dragons and you get to go in a strategy. I've talked to a lot of people about this. They loved it. Riot immediately decided to rework Mordekaiser after <laughs> I tweeted it out, by the way. Exactly why. So maybe they also recognized that it was so damaging and so powerful that it needed to just be reworked. Who knows? Just some food for thought. Look at that. That is just the power of Yumi. Yeah, but uh. Two v two, not bad here. I mean, Swain Pike is a lane we saw a little bit of when mages were much more popular, kind of the start of last year. And uh, CLG have certainly mixed it up in their two v two quite a bit. So it is nice to see Mage plus Pike there in the bottom half. It's Tuesday looking to grab the red buff. Does smite down that for himself, and it's straight back to me to scoop up all the farm. Yeah, Moon helping him out. This must be such a weird place to be when you're Moon, a jungler, now being Leona supporting your jungle. I bet he would wish he was the Corky here. Let's we'll see. Is Moon going to continue funneling minions in? I believe Olive doing the right thing. Uh, can just really only push the lane and try and roam maybe for some vision. Tactical is continuing to try and harass. Creeps down as well, but we're going to try and get the stun down. Good little combination onto Tactical. The speaker wants to make his presence known in some of these lanes. We can see what the Swain Pike lane is trying to do. We've seen it before, like you mentioned. But because the jungler is quirky, there's no threat of anybody ever coming down there. So Lucian can be as aggressive as he wants. It's just... They, they need to get past the laning phase. And right now, CLG Academy is down 600 gold with this funnel strat. Yeah, so far, 
not so good, but we'll see if Tuesday can have a big impact. Corky is certainly a champion that scales very well with items. So if he's able to get access to those earlier, given that his build is so expensive, I can see some merit here for the pick. So he really does, but from what I gathered from MSI and just last split... Oh, Tuesday! Jesus. It was that you can't go for scaling. If your win condition is scaling, you're asking for the opponent to do way too much punishment to you. So it typically comes down to, can you have one or two champions that are relevant in the late game and then just go for some crazy power in the early game? And sacking the early game this much that you're already down that thousand gold feels a step too far. See how it plays out, but Tactical and Tree, it's getting aggressive here with the Yumi Lucian. Auto just gonna try and collect what CS he can here on the Swain. That does give Tack and Treat some room to maneuver out of this lane. Early Stinger also completed there for a Blaze Olive, who again does have the job of shoving out the lane as quickly as possible for the most part. All right, so Corky and Leona just farming away happily. Oop, wow. He that outplayed himself, but that's some nice movement there on the missile. That must be a lot of fun, actually, being the Yumi. Not not the one that has to deal with it, but at least someone's having fun. Moving up here. Tuesday is just continuing to do some jungle. And our Fallen Bandit, you know, not having the best of times, getting Perma pushed in by the cannon with no jungler, but keeping it even. Here's the good news. When you pick the Orn, though, all of the items that Corky really wants to go for, that Trinity Force, the Infinity Edge, he can use his rework and, and buff him up. So this Corky, yeah, if it goes crazy late game, I'm talking level 18, he's going to be hitting like a truck. It's just like mega funnel with but the But that's so end. late. We've gone one level up. Right? That's so late game. And, and at that point, one decision can win the game for any team, which is why it's not such a viable strategy because you have to execute really well later into the game. Speaker trying to steal away the wolf better. Oh, actually, maybe with the Blaze Olive here, Tuesday is going to have to smite the big wolf and get out of there. So they do finish off the camp. Speaker gets a little bit out of the little wolf. Oof, but look at, look at Moon. He's level three. He's the lowest level in the game. That's a sacrifice you have to make. Like, how are you going to go engage onto, say, a level six Azir or even Jarwin that it's about to hit level six? Leona has not been having a good time. Well, that's kind of what you sign up for when you team pick Funnel. Not if it wasn't more Kaiser, Leona. Well, gonna start the Drake at least. In fact, Speaker's almost already finished it, but shoots and Tactical with plenty of 2v2 pushing power. Able to assist, make sure that goes down. PSM Academy don't look too deterred by this unconventional Corky Leona, at least yet. A lot of the time when you're up against a crazy strategy or not to say that this is crazy, something that you've never played against or haven't seen before, the best course of action is, all right, just play it super slow. Let them dictate the pace of the game, and then you respond, and then you get a good understanding for what their power spikes are because you're letting them dictate the game. And when you realize that they don't do anything, then you start putting the pedal to the metal. And with that first Mountain Drake, you've got some really powerful pushers in this game. You've got Brandini, Likes to split push, likes to push from the side, and then you got Azir, one of the greatest mid laners at taking down towers. Yeah, checking with the gold right now. See, it's an academy up about 1500 gold, and a lot of that gold is sitting on the Javan here. I mean, looking at the gold between the two mid laners, yes, Tuesday is up about 20 CS thanks to the jungle camps, but the gold is pretty much even between the two. Yeah, except there is a 1.3k lead in TSM Academy here, most of it being, I guess. Jarvin to Leona. Yeah, because Leona's not getting it. Yeah, the that, that's really the, the discrepancy, but a weak Leona, is that something you really want? Wouldn't you want to have Leona, your main engage tool, be really tanky and strong and filled with gold? I would think so, but we'll see how it pans out here. Tuesday continuing to take camps. Gets another red, gets the Krugs, has the package ready as well, so it may be time for CLG Academy to make a bit more of a proactive play. Why do so, you leave a tiny cap? It is Red Smite Corky, which is going to be really filthy at soloing anybody, so he's going to deal a ton of damage with this build. It's just a matter of can anybody set up the fight to do so? And I think they have all the tools. 
they just have to be grouped up. Also curious to see if uh, Selene and Pike can get anything done here. Again, not right now, because in you know, an isolated 2v2 when you don't have a jungler, it's pretty tough. In fact, Speaker, maybe even threatening here, is going to start the blue buff. And he knows he can kind of get away with this because his laners have all pushed up. But Blaze Olive has control in the mid lane and bottom lane Yumi and Lucian. They are trying to collapse. It's a nice <laughs> little job of waiting out Colin's knockup and gets the steal. So that blue steal makes a world of difference because Corky is a mana based. Oh, God, I can't believe I was going to say he's a mana based jungler. That, <laughs> that statement just hurts. Mana based champion. But again, I can see the team fight potential here between the Swain Pike and the Orn and the Leona. They certainly have enough engage to let Tuesday shine if you can get towards these items. But again, seems like we're a while away from that. Let's see some Academy just playing nice and, nice and steadily here versus the more unconventional strategy. And the Corky Leona power comes from the fact that Corky dealing so much damage with his little Gatling gun passive as well, can constantly proc all of Leona's Daybreak passes, which are when she applies damage, somebody else can deal damage, and then it procs a little extra additional damage. So, Corky, a classic combination here, just not one that you would expect to see in the mid lane. Also, a ton of magic damage on the CLGA side. I always forget how much of Corky's damage is actually magic. It's about 80% or more, I think. But you always have Pike. That's true. The great equalizer, Pike. True damage. Doesn't matter what you build. Doesn't matter if you have all the HP in the world. It's percent, so it's 9999. Well, TSM again continuing to play aggressive. Treats actually roamed up to join Speaker here, and uh, both ultis ready for the Javan and the Yumi. Seems like a decent combination as they check the brush with the missile. We can now see Colin's moved up, but I don't know if they know about Speaker and Treats just yet. So it looks like he's farming all around. A nice little lane swap. Not wanting to go up against Swain Pike. Or just making the play for the Rift Herald. Which seems more plausible. Considering that you've got a cannon with a teleport ready to go. But they don't have a ward on the red side of CLG Academy space. So the TP would have to come from the top tri bush Or in one of these control rooms. I'm not sure they can really pick a fight here. Tuesday's actually bottom lane. He's where all the gold is as well as the fact that he's still farming up. So it looks like Tucson Academy will be able to get that Rift Tower for themselves if they do collect the objective. Tuesday here is going to take the crap for himself, continuing his work experience in the jungle. All right, now where is Rift Herald going to be used? What speaker got planned here? Because I'm thinking you want to get a Blaze Olive or Tactical ahead. And the reason why I say that is you usually want to get ahead the champions that can make the most out of having an advantage that can really press that advantage wherever they go. And if you were to get Ken in the head, it's not like he's going to start bullying the Orn. He's just going to be able to have some really nice teleports, and that's about it. Whereas if you get the Azir ahead or the Lucian ahead, they might be able to start bullying their lane partners a lot more. Looks like second Drake here as well for TSM Academy. Again, not panicking, taking the objective. It certainly feels like CLG Academy are just kind of letting things go by the wayside here, which for now might be fine, but I wonder how much more they can lose before they need to get something done with this Corky they've invested so much into. Well, I wonder just how much they've practiced this. This is this is a rare one, right? Because you might have even gotten practice with this comp on blue side, but the sides actually do make a difference on your jungle route, on the order of the draft. So there's a lot of factors that might have gone into this draft that we just can't anticipate. And maybe that's why the game has been so slow, because unlike everything else, you know, two games ago, we were half, we were more than halfway to the game being over. Yeah, I think again, TSM Academy just not wanting to press. No, no real need to, given how stable the game feels for them right now. And I also don't think TSM have to press anything. You have Azir with Lethal Tempo. This is a crazy late game champion that's going to be able to take down tanks. So you're not worried that there's a Swain or an Orn or even a, a hyper fed Corky. You have a Z, and then you have a Lucian that's turned into a hyper carry with Yumi and a Kennen that can lock everybody down. So I think TSM is more than happy at this pace, considering that the dragons they've gotten are godly. You've got Mountain and Infernal. They are in a good spot, and they're just hoping that CLG can't execute on whatever the execution looks like. Yeah, still don't really know what's happening here. 
at least as far as what the game plan after these first 14 minutes have been. I think when Tuesday has his Trinity Force, we may be get a few more answers to those questions. Auto also has finished his Rod of Ages, so he's charging up in power as well. And we haven't even seen Moon use his E once. Like, that's how little action has happened. Call in looking for Speaker, but doesn't grab him there with the hook. Can't take him over the wall anyway. The Speaker does still need to find a place to drop this Rift Herald, but looks like bottom lane's a nice and straightforward one. Unfortunately, he missed out on the timing window to get that extra money, so it's just going to be a push for that first brick. Still, Gold will be happy to get. And uh, is running a little low on time. He's got about three quarters of the Rift Herald timer already ticked away. Just more farming back and forth. No one wants to go for this play. There's still teleports available. And with Corky and Leona off the map, they just don't want to risk it. Instead, it's going to be a nice and easy just walk up to the turret, take it down. That's first brick for TSM. And the Rift Herald still available for any other push. There's an ulti from Moon, but a Blaze Olive with a cleanse gets out of there. That's all we wanted to see. Burn the cleanse. At least now there's an opportunity to go for it again. And we just hope that this would have happened earlier, but it's just unfortunate that Moon is level seven now, so he actually has not had that much time to pull it off. Repelled mid, CSM grouping together to try and force something here. Colin does find a really nice stun chain onto Tactical, but uh, not enough to take all the health, and that's really what you need there. Oh, and also looking for the flank, but Colin Band are gonna get cut off. TP in from Auto, now gonna get collapsed on his on. Trying to charge things up, Randini forced to flash away, but Auto pops the ulti, goes in, a stasis, the dodge is zero, but Yumi all out, gonna try and root the front line, that's a really nice fighter's first blood, over to Brandini, gonna kick things off for TSM, Tactical able to grab the next, actually grabs himself a double kill, as CLG must turn tail and run. And that's just CLG trying to get a fight off of a TP that was not asked for, Kennen pokes out Fallen Bandit, and CLG tries to get a fight, but that's not premeditated, that's reactionary, and that just benefits TSM so much. When you have the Azir that can zone, when you pop the cannon ultimate as well, the fight was just way too good for TSM there because CLG was not coordinated. Remember that Moon didn't even have his ult, they just used it in the mid lane. So it all starts with Fallen Bandit, it's about half HP already. The TP comes out, but there's no Leona that can follow up. Tuesday already used Gatling Gun, and the Ornol goes on one target. Not a big deal. A zero to mid zones. And look at that. How is anyone supposed to deal any damage here? Yeah, Yumiel and Kenanol doing a very nice job defending, and Tuesday didn't even have the Trinity Force. I think still doesn't have it. So even if he got involved in the fight, I'm not sure how much CLG were expecting to get there. And that's one of the dangers of playing Funnel. It is high execution, and you're putting your players in roles where they can't really be that clutch. You know, you can't expect that much out of Moon. How many games do you think he really has on Leona? The man's been playing jungle for about five years. I'm sure one of, the, right? one of them was a Leona game. Yeah, but it, it's not the same as having, say, 3,000 EVE games. I do wonder how many EVE games Moon has. It's a lot. She yeah. is definitely very good. It might be more than 3,000. Colin and Brandini going to have a scuffle, but Brandini significantly stronger than the support. So Colin just going to dash away there with the E. Uh, Tuesday has now finished his Trinity Force as well. So... At least that is something that CLG Academy may be able to lean on. They're three and a half thousand gold down, but again, not so familiar with what they're expecting here with this funnel strategy. Speaker just going to go in and engage. Good pull out there from Paul Lin, but Auto going to get jumped on, forced to pop the ulti. Speaker though has trapped him in the arena. And that's Paul and Bandit going to find a good two-man ulti. They do shut down tactical treats. Not enough to try and save him when Yumi is so squishy. It's Colin able to get the kill under Brandini for the bonus. Gold Moon lines up the E and nails treats with it as Tuesday grabs the double. And now Blaze Olive is going to be the next target. Colin flash hook in the pike hold once more. Able to find the execute and finally CLG Academy win the fight. The funnel's coming to life. We saw Tuesday and Moon just eliminate tactical from the fight. The Leona ultimate was great there and the engage happened on to the Swain, but this time around, Corky was at the start of the fight dealing so much damage, and CLG now commits. They're able to get a top lane tower. That's their first objective of the game, and they might be able to reset now and go for a Cloud Dragon. So let's take a look.
So, uh, this so before, actually, we'll get into this after. We'll watch this one again, because finally, Seals' so, comp kind of showing us. So they done. go all go on Nato, but I want to take a look at the bottom part of the map. Look at Moon. He gets the E onto tactical. The ult misses, but the fact that the E lands is more than enough to get Tuesday to dish out the damage, and there's nobody around to help treat get inside anyone. So this was just a really good move out of Moon and Tuesday. And then Colin flashing in, gets a final pull onto a Blaze Olive, and with the execute, finds two kills from that. So there's a ton of gold that went over to the pockets of CLG. It was an Ono so good, the tree saving got clipped by it at the very end of it there. Moon once again going in. Tuesday roaming in with a package. Two shots on the tactical speaker. They're going to get rooted up and pulled back by the Swain. He'll flash out of the way. The ult from Leona, not quite enough to finish off the kill. That was way too far, but you at least get to see how much damage is coming out of Tuesday. He is super strong with a 700 gold bounty. Wow. And again, Fallen Bandit, not there just yet, but soon we'll be at the levels where he can start upgrading those items as well. And I feel like, you know, we saw the arm, we said, okay, Corky buys a lot of items that he kind of wants to upgrade into Masterwork items. So, you know, is that the Mega Funnel? And now after seeing the Pike, giving away the extra gold to add even more to the funneling strategy crumbs. I think this is Omega Funnel. Yeah, the, <laughs> the pike is actually a really cool element in being able to catch up, just the fact that you get... Oh, Ooh. Brandini! Oh no, this is before the dragon. This is definitely gonna be CLG pulling the trigger onto this dragon because Tuesday's so fed, he's level 15! Holy crap, he's five levels up on tactical. And that's the thing, right? This is why you do the funnel for the XP, not just the CS that you get. Or the Fallen Bandit getting caught. Not a good look there as the Ultra Mumi gonna try and root a few more in. Speaker there, following up with the combination. Odd's gonna fall, takes down the pike as well. Oh no, disaster strikes for CLG. What was a great opportunity to go for the dragon. Fallen Bandit might have gotten some pathing issues, kind of a little distracted, gets taken out, and then they lose Colin as well. That should have definitely been CLG's dragon, but they just were not patient with their positioning. Otto was not able to make it there at the fight. I think he was basing, and there was a bit of a miscommunication. Yeah, TSM did the right thing as well. They just shoved mid and then moved back to the Drake. So I think CLG Academy not fully prepared to move back around the objective, and TSM Academy do capitalize. They're starting to see, you know, how things can go right here. Yeah, so they push mid and Leona and Swin are stuck behind, but Fallen Bandit unwilling to give it up. It looks like Tuesday and Colin had started the dragon, thinking they could have just soloed it right there on the spot. They have to remember, every single member of this team, with the exception of Tuesday, is incredibly weak. They cannot do anything on their own. If Corky is not there having his entire posse to back him up, this team gets nowhere. So they need to be even more careful than they've been so far. Otherwise, one more fight could result in a Baron with a Mountain team and an Azir. Yeah, more than usual, you really have to stick together and find the funnel that you've invested into here. Don't want to give up on your, your investment halfway through, Crumbs. No, you got to write it out. Always hold. There you go for, your, for you crypto guys. Knight's mouth there for Moon. Has knighted Tuesday, who's now got an Infinity Edge. 22 and a half minutes in, not bad. But essentially a three item timing, including the Red Smite plus the Warrior. The TSM still looking good. Gonna push up mid once again as CLG Academy still have a lot of ground to try and make up. There it is, the Infinity Edge out of Corky. He is gonna hit like a truck. Level 16 to a level 11 Lucian. Brandini, ooh, he's gonna find Tuesday, who's it's out of the way with the Valkyrie. Call in spotted by Treats. And he takes that poke, but he can always go back to the camp, shoot a little smite over, it's back to almost full HP. Also, uh, something that doesn't come up that often, but important to note that Tuesday will be the one to take down the objective, just as any sort of clutch or 50-50 situation. Brandini though, may be caught out here. Tuesday gonna look to try and hunt him down, but Brandini zips away with the E. His Tactical still pushing here in the side. And I get why CLG wants to try and force something, because Tactical has been top lane for so long, but... TSM doing a good job defending. They at least get the flash out of Cannon, which is pretty nice. Nice grab until Blaze Olive. Oh, that's gonna force the flash and the ulti out of Yumi. Lucian still pushing into the top lane. So by getting the Cannon flash, that means that the TP flank from Brandini and the flank is not that good. But by committing the Ornn ultimate, your dive is just not that good either. So they can't do much in a 4v5 there. And even if they could, 
I mean, the execution we've seen so far, I don't think is good enough to pull that off. Almost no team could pull that off against an Azir, Jarvan, and Kennen under tower. That's really difficult. I think Azir is really good, actually, against these kind of strategies. Exactly. So good at pushing. Just gatekeeping the mid lane out of tower for, I mean, again, almost 25 minutes in this game. Look at the CS at Corky. 357. Flame Horizoning with some help. Still. That's 113 CS up. Hex drinking now as well. I mean, again, if, uh, if they're investing all this much into Tuesday, it's got to pay off at some point in the game for CLG Academy. It's pretty obvious what the strategy is. Take down Corky. If Corky's out, they can win these fights. Well, see if the CLG can set up Tuesday to succeed here. It's continuing to just take camp after camp. Has the package ready as well. That was kind of what triggered the last fight they won. Fika getting it shot down. Moon going to lock him up. But Speaker flag and dragged out of the way. Tax on the front line, not where he wants to be. He's gonna be forced to flash down his call in. Trying to find the X but couldn't quite grab it. Auto in the front side with a good Zonyas. Yumi ulti there as Tuesday gets exhausted. Really nice stuff there from Treats, but TSM not able to find follow-up kills, and they are so afraid of this Corky. And they at least trade a one for one. Kennen is out, but they do burn Fallen Bandit's teleport to make it into the fight. That means that Brandini will have his own ultimate for this next fight, and that next fight matters more because objectives will be taken. Pings onto the Baron, but first, let's take another look at how this started. Moon gets a nice E onto Spica, and then the ultimate to follow up, but he flashes out, and then take a look at how quickly Brandini goes down. That rocket almost did a third of his HP right away. A good exhaust from Yumi right away to make sure that Tuesday does not get additional damage onto a Blaze Olive. And overall, a one-for-one -one trade, but TSM walks away with a summoner spell at him. I mean, Gold's not getting that out of hand here. I think CLG Academy somewhat happy with where they've managed to land the Corky. And Colin going to be forced away from the Baron area by Speaker. But still need to open up the map. That's going to be the biggest challenge here for CLG is getting this mid out of turret. Maybe forcing a fight around this Drake, which is up. And the thing is, once Corky hits 18, there's no way to go up from there. You're not going to continue to have that XP advantage. So everybody else is going to be catching up. He's about a third of the way there. They need to be playing around Corky even more now because then everybody catches up and the funnel just fades away into oblivion. Nice ult, find speaker, but no real follow up there. Moon just fishing. Also not even level 11, so that's a pretty long cooldown on that rank one ultimate. That's that Mercury Treads out of Speaker. Really good itemization here, considering there's so much magic damage out of every member in CLG except fight. Full of magic. What are you doing? He just upgraded his locket instead of the Infinity Edge. Greedy on. Yeah, that's... Uh... I mean, he'll get them eventually. I'm sure it's fine. I feel like you're not respecting the fun. Well, if, if the if the locket works well, you might be able to save a lot of your team members, make for a stronger team fight. So it's not the end of the world. No, no, no. Every upgraded item is amazing. Sorry, everything to me is hyperbole. It's actually fine what Paul and Bandit did, but uh, I'm just expecting Tuesday to to be the recipient of every investment. Yeah, absolutely. Brandini also fancying some side lane cannon. That's that mountain coming in clutch. Without a mountain, he would not have been able to get that turret on that push. Well, now TSM going to get more aggressive. This is halfway through. They already have sight. Tuesday does have his snipe, though. It might be... It's a fight, though. All demanded. Finds Tactical, gets knocked up, but no follow-up. Auto TP's in. Oh, just missing there into Brandini, who does have the ulti. Flash ready is all over the pick. Gonna get stunned back around as he goes in for it, but getting a little too low for the man in the front side with auto. A good ult there from Yumi to try and prevent the rest of the fight out, but auto finally dies as Moon looking at the front line on Tuesday. Just needs to play cleanup. Flashing in, doesn't get onto tactical treats. Still alive as well, attached to the Lucian. And that was so close. The thing that made a world of difference was that when Brandini teleported, his flash was on about two to three seconds before coming up. So he had to wait around in the pit, use his E before engaging. So let's take a look at how this fight started. The teleport from Swain begins the fight. 
everyone he disengages, and then they see that Kennen is going in, so they try to turn onto him, and he can't flash engage right now, which really sucks for him, so he has to wait, he gets pulled down, and then he goes for it, but his E is down, which means he can't continue to press forward to try to hit the Corky, instead just gets the tank line, which frees up Tuesday to deal all the damage in the world, and this man is so confident, he flashes in to try to hit a tactical with the big one. That does not get it, so we'll not have the flash for the next go-round, which uh, could be critical in keeping the one champion they really need to keep alive in these team fights, the CLG Academy and CSM forcing back onto the Baron. There's a package, but Corky's not going to make it. This Baron is CSM's. And, Great call. And he's the only smite. Nicely played there from TSM Academy. Now just need to get out safely, but that looks pretty straightforward as Street providing cover fire with the missiles. What a genius move by them. They are going to be slightly engaged upon, but this doesn't matter. Root pulled back. Tuesday here again, but a good Yumi all going to try and disengage. And now onto Tuesday, they go. Speaker dives in for the order. In the choke points, going to find a two-man knockup. Tuesday still low. And Speaker does take out Colin, but the Corky is still uh, tactical. Going to try and get the fight happening, and they do manage to pick him off. TSM Academy going to get the next one. A tactical fight. It's a double kill. That's a Baron and a complete ace for only the jungler. TSM gets so much much out of that play and that's because CLG engages in a completely irrational time I said this didn't matter because it should not have mattered CLG should not have gone for that play instead Colin chooses to go for some pick they get overconfident thinking that the Orn was going to be huge in the corridor but Yumi's ultimate was even bigger keeping everybody alive and fighting around that wolf camp they might be going for the end here you've got 20 seconds onto the cork can he do anything or can his team do anything TSM Academy gonna look for it here their auto goes into stasis but TSM still shoving auto in the ulti call then gonna miss that hook and TSM Academy will be forced out not able to end the game right there, but you can see just how quickly they are to pull the trigger onto the objectives. That Baron call just won them the game if they are able to close this one out. That was huge out of them. And then the engage from CLG was just the, the extra, the icing on the cake. So this all starts with Colin being greedy. There's no damage here, okay? There's no one. Corky packages in, but immediately into the root, which frees up Speaker to hit a nice knock up onto him. And then he buys a little bit more time, but you see Tactical finds a nice Q over the wall, gets to go in on Tuesday, finishes him off. He's got Yumi to help him up. And when the Corky is down, everybody else on CLG is down. Yeah, we talked about, you know, investing resources into this Corky, but you also mentioned that, you know, Yumi, really good at protecting one single threat and buffing them up. And Tactical, 6, 1, and 5 with a massive bounty on his head. And I'm sure I overlooked a Blaze Olive in that fight as well, because Azir in the corridor is just as deadly as anyone else. He is essentially a rumble ult on command if you can't get out of the line of sight of those soldiers. So he did a lot of work and he now has a bounty of 450 gold. Yeah, the carries of TSM Academy looking very strong here. It felt like CLG Academy, you know, they they picked this Corky Smite, they kind of navigated through what looked like a rough early game and then found a team fight that looked good, but at this point, Tactical now unstoppable is just decimating everyone on CLG. A treats with an offensive ulti. Gonna keep going in for it. There's the auto ticket. They may be fine. The re-engage tactical low, but he's not dead just yet. Auto can't trigger the ulti Nova and so does and doesn't get the kill as a result. TSM continues to push, so they didn't lose a single member, and you've got a healing support. That lets you continue to push this fight. It looks like they're going, wait a minute, they're going for mid lane. They're gonna go try to end the game right now. They have Kennen, whose ultimate is about to be back up. No reason to sit around and wait here for TSM Academy. Moon gonna be the first target, he'll be shot down. A speaker is able to grab the last hit. Nexus Turret 1 is dead. Two's taking a fight for his life here. So he's back against the fountain. But TSM Academy, they dodge the old out of call in with a heal there from Tactical. They'll get the kills. The rest of CLGA will stream in and TSM Academy get through the Corky Funnel and win their first game of the 2019 Summer Academy season. No falter, calm and collected the whole way through and they won with a really great Baron call that was just perfect. They tried it one time, they got the fight and then went right back at it again knowing that the Corky was not going to make it on time and that's the power of that Mountain Dragon. Without it, it would not have worked. Again, important to note, you know, even in unconventional situations, what do you do? As we look at these fights, CLG look like they might have had something here. And this fight was the one that benefited TSM here because the engage did not allow Corky to deal a lot of damage. And this time around, this was the one where 
CLG was able to come back because the flash hook on Pike secures the shutdown and then an unfortunate moment. I think what we really saw here out of CLG was a really good strategy. It's just a matter of a lot of these players need to understand they're no longer making plays. They are all part of helping Corky. So, so many times we saw Pike, Orn, even Swain try to do something on their own. And unfortunately, you just can't afford to do that. This composition does not let anybody make plays. It lets one person make play, and that is Corky. Yeah. And uh, the Tuesday, despite all the gold that he received, was not able to get it done at the end of the day. Well, now we got to see something new. The Corky Leona funnel. It's not really new, but we got to see it new in, in, in Academy. Well, you know what? I'm curious if anyone from TSM Academy knows about it, because I believe TSM Academy's Ablaze Olive is ready to go via Skype to tell us more about their victory. Ablaze Olive, welcome to the broadcast. Glad to be here. Did you think that Corky Leona was going to be the strategy that CLG was going to run at you? Uh, definitely not. Not something that we had predicted, and we didn't really know what was happening until sort of the lock-in at the very end of the champion select. Uh, we were expecting like a jungler being picked last, but definitely threw us a curveball, but I think we adapted pretty well. Yeah, you guys played it really sick. Uh, who made that Baron call, by the way? I thought that the, the Baron call that you guys made with Corky being back was just like a game-winning moment. So how does the thought process behind your team and their decision-making translate to such a decisive and clutch play? Uh, I think the reason it was so decisive is because all of us sort of called for it. We all saw like a pocket of vision in the top side where Corky was resetting. So we knew that since Corky's the one with Smite, then we can just sort of force Baron. We already had a Mountain Drake, and Azir's already super fast at killing Baron. So we thought we uh, could just force it. We weren't 100% sure that he actually finished his recall, but when we saw him pick up Package, we knew that we had it. That's true. I forgot that you can always hit the Package even when he picked yeah. it up. Really solid call. I have to ask you, though, uh, you now have uh, one or two new junglers moving up beside you in Academy. You had such great synergy with Grig, of course, or Last Split. So what's it been like playing with Speaker? Uh, Speaker's a fantastic player. I think he's super good mechanically, and he definitely has a lot to learn. Um, I think uh, we're sort of showing him the ropes. We've had a lot of help sort of Last Split because we had to keep uh, going back and forth between the junglers. So... We've gotten pretty good at sort of uh, accommodating different jungle players. And I think that sort of outside of a few hiccups this game, we had a relatively clean game. And I think that sort of shows through our practice how well we, how far we've gone. Nice. Um, so what makes you think that Azir is super solid right now in the meta? Because when we were looking at MSI, a lot of things were, a lot of teams were saying, why is SKT prioritizing Azir? And it kind of just fell off a little bit, but you picked it right up and you've always been really good at it. So where does Azir fit in the meta right now? Um, I think Azir is sort of like a level below all the really strong flex picks right now. So there's like six or so like really strong top mid flex picks. And I think Azir has a pretty decent matchup into most of them. And against most mages, Azir sort of outscales them. And a lot of these team fights, you kind of want to have a lot of mobility and be able to make plays. And Azir sort of has everything in that sort of regard. I think he hasn't been in the meta a lot right now, so people sort of forgot how to like how strong he really was. And sort of all the rune changes and people not like not every champion going inspiration now. I think it has really helped them uh, sort of rock it back up to sort of the top of the mid lane pick. All right, well, Blaze Olive, thank you so much and congratulations on your win today, and good luck on Sunday versus Team Liquid Academy. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. All right, we've got one more game coming up. After the break, 100 Thieves Academy <laughs> will challenge Optic Academy. Don't go too far. <laughs>